What's going on, Bench Warmers? This is Nico Brown here with the Center of Attention for the Far End of the Bench Podcast, episode 203. Still chugging along over here. And, well, it's October 23rd, as recording this, 24th, as you're listening to this. And uh, it's spooky season. And, well, the only thing in Denver right going on right now that's spooky is how little respect the def- or the, the champions of the 2023 NBA Finals are getting this season. We are predicted the fifth best team in the NBA. Or in the West, we're expected to, to be a second-round exit. We're expected this and the other thing. Last time I checked, the best player in the world still plays in Denver, in Denver, Colorado. And he will be playing on Thursday night against the Oklahoma City Thunder, showing the world who the real MVP is and showing why we don't load manage <coughs> Philadelphia over here in Denver. So basketball is back, baby. We are both – and football's going well. Things are things aren't looking bad football wise. So I'm saying football's not looking bad. Abs are kind of turning around after a very very slow start. Um, but Nuggets basketball, there's nothing like it. Everyone knows I love my basketball over here, and I'm so so damn excited to see what the boys and Navy and, and and White do this year. Obviously, the additions of Russell Westbrook and Dario Saric headlined the list. Got departures of KCP and. I'm sorry, Davon, Davon Reed. I guess that that's that's who our big loss was. It's it's there's not this team got better than last year, and I cannot wait to see what the young guns on this squad do alongside the best player in the world, Nikola Jokic and company. Oh, and by the way, Aaron Gordon, congrats on the signing. That this core four will be locked up together for the next three years at minimum. 2026, 2027 will be the first contract up, and that will be Michael Porter Jr. This squad is staying together. We just got to figure everything else out, baby. So basketball season's back. Ball still season is still going well. Hockey season, getting there. But we're all the way back. It's the best time of the year for, for playoffs, baseball, for regular season football, regular season college basketball, and now regular season basketball and hockey too. So without further ado, let's get into the rest of the episode. If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench. Bring the boom! We bring the boom to... I'm sorry, everybody did it. Did you see that? Did you watch any college football on Saturday? Literally yeah. everybody brought the boom. Everybody! I didn't know that this – I didn't know that, you know, I'm not going to say what I was I was originally going to say. I almost went full loopy. It is late night as we were recording this, episode 203. You guys just heard from my co-host, Nico Bryant. I couldn't have said it any better myself. This is like the sports cornucopia. I know we love March, um, especially with what we're seeing out of college football, though. Like, you have four leagues getting over 3 million viewers. Five. Per, five. You can go five per, You can you probably go five, go five million viewers per event so far. With between now NBA, um, the not I guess NBA with the opening night, we'll see how that goes. But the World Series is going on. NFL football has been flying high. College football has been crazy, and we're getting pretty good ratings too. I'm going to throw us in there because we deserve a little bit of credit. Thank you everybody very much for tuning in to the far end of the bench episode 203. Like Nico said, uh, we are glad that you are here joining us. If this is your first time, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Like I have given permission. Negative comments are allowed if you like the video and subscribe. Then you can leave your negative comment. We can see if we can maybe work out a middle ground here. But that is uh, where you can find us at FEOTB Pod on all social medias. And be sure to subscribe, tell your friends. And uh, we are with you every single week, come hell or high water, whether it's a third 15 hour day in a row or, you know, just uh, a casual Thursday night viewing experience. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, I guess I'm not salty, but I'm just like, when I texted you before we started the show, I was like, I'm in the bathroom because I forgot to schedule a bathroom break. I wasn't I wasn't shitting you at all. I had 30 minutes where I was not in front of kids today. That's my Wednesday works out like that. And then I have wrestling practice starting, middle school wrestling season's going. You get full Coach P experience because I go from wrestling 3 to 4.30. I go football 6 to 8. I'm here for the podcast. Let's Let's go, baby. I'm that's, ready. that's the grind. That's the grind of, 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 of not doing this for a living, unfortunately. And that's that's what that's what we've signed up for. And that's why we love doing this every single week. Because as long as as long as shitty day as it may have been, like like this is this is this is a point where we love to do this and we love to talk about shit that that, that means something to us. And boy, do we got a lot to talk about each week. So we cannot miss a, a show each week. No, it's especially with this. Um, everybody's been excited for it. It's the matchup that ESPN has been dreaming about. Um, we are going to start in the MLB. We have our 
World Series matchup set, but I think we should start by looking back at the championship series first. I'm going to pull up the bracket. I will put it up on the screen. So if you're watching on YouTube, everybody should make sure to go check out the YouTube channel. You can see all of the stuff that we're talking about as I throw it up on the screen here. The Yankees able to beat the Guardians 4-1. Dodgers got a little bit of a scare. We were, I guess, close, somewhat close to a Subway series, but really the Mets, they could not deal with the lineup. They could not deal with the amount of arms that the Dodgers have in the bullpen. This is probably the culmination of, I think, the last four to five years of the MLB. The Yankees, since 2017, when they lost against Houston in the ALCS, have been trying to get to the World Series. The Dodgers have been there. They've won a championship. But now these are the two teams with the highest payrolls. They're the two teams that have brought in the most amount of stars. Like we're seeing Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, Giancarlo Stanton versus Freddie Freeman, um, Shohei Otani, other studs that L.A. has all up and down their lineup. It would be different if Shohei was able to pitch this season. I will say that. It is nice that he's got his game changed and he's going to be exciting as he gets on the base pads. I will say that would bring an extra element, and I think that would maybe even juice the ratings just a little bit more. But out of those championship series, it's not like people weren't watching, and there were fun storylines all around. Cleveland hasn't won and hasn't been necessarily relevant in the MLB since the 1990s. The Mets... They, they spend big boy money. It's about time they start playing like a big boy baseball team, but unfortunately they fall short. What did you see out of those championship series from the American and National League sides? Well, the, the Mets and – I mean, the Mets and Guardians put up two hell of a fight. I think the Mets gave up a little – put up a little bit more of a fight. I think they're a more talented team than the Guardians overall. But um, this is this is a World Series in the making since 1981. It is the two biggest markets in, in, in sports, not not just baseball, in sports. It's L.A. and New York. And, and, and whether you like it or not, Chicago, Florida, whatever, Texas, those are the two biggest markets. And um, when you have two, the two biggest markets with – arguably the two best players in the world, which I think they are, and and and, and Otani and, and Judge going head to head, like this is everything you could want so much more. Do I like either team? Not necessarily. Is is it is is majority of this country just hate the Dodgers? Yes. Does majority just this country hate the Yankees? Yes. That's just the way it goes. But when you have when it's been what is it? Forty years now. Nineteen eighty one was the last time these two faced the World Series. These this is the, these are two franchises that are will always be linked together between the Brooklyn Dodgers, New York Yankees days, uh, way back when to now, obviously in 2024 with LA Dodgers and, and New York Yankees. So it's, it's a, it's a rivalry that's obviously doesn't get a lot of love, but it's a rivalry that, that, well, you know, when the Dodgers or Yankees are coming into town, Unfortunately, here in Colorado, we know this too well. Majority of fans are going to be wearing navy blue or going to be in that 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 royal blue for the Dodgers. It's mm-hmm. it, that's just the way it goes. They travel the best. They they widespread fans across the country. It's the way it goes. So as as shitty of it is as a, for a small market, this is two powerhouses, and it is a must see must see World Series. I'm very excited to watch. Game one will start October 25th, so the day after you're able to see this episode and listen to it. Um, If you're listening to this Friday morning, you are getting geared up for game one. As it stands now, when we're recording this Wednesday night, the Yankees are going to be an underdog plus 105 Dodgers holding a minus 125 money line. The Dodgers did have a better regular season, 98 and 64. The Yankees right behind them at 94 and 68. But this is the Yankees should have been here for a long time with the way that they've been spending money with the amount of juice that they have in their lineup. They're all about hitting bombs. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see because what we what have we talked about with uh, postseason baseball and the Dodgers specifically? They might not have necessarily the starters in their rotation that you're going to get nine innings out of all of them, but they can throw five, six, seven relievers at you at a night and still have arms left over in the bullpen. So if the the guy first guy's not doing well, you're going to see a new pitcher, you're going to see a new arm, you're going to see a new angle. Like you're not going to get comfortable. This is where. I don't necessarily love analytics in baseball. I think that baseball is much more of a vibes game, especially if you're a manager. Like, if you got a guy dealing nine, eight innings in, and you're like, oh, well, he's thrown this many pitches, and analytics say it's time to pull him. If the, good, if the dude's still dealing, let the dude deal. You got a guy playing to this moment in the postseason, you got to let it go. I'm interested to see how the Yankees lineup is going to deal with the amount of pitchers that they're going to see, because I guarantee you they see at least 15 different arms throughout this series. 
and I would say guess that 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 uh, Dave Roberts and the Dodgers have already game plan certain parts of that lineup and how what pitchers will face that. And I think that they've prepared their relievers that way because you know that at some point, obviously, there'll be a bullpen game for the Dodgers, and that's how they'll they'll throw out. Probably that's how they close out the series against the uh, uh, Mets. Uh, uh, funny enough, in game in game six, so you expect that to happen at some point. And with with this Yankees lineup, like, like it is a very very star studded power hitting. Just, just, just monster of a lineup. Like your first four that you have to deal with are Glaber Torres, uh, uh, Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, John Carlos Stanton. That that is four guys, or Glaber Torres probably not as much as the latter three, but three guys that can all hit the ball at least five eighty on a good day. Like they they can hit the snot out of the ball, and, and, yeah. and with Glaber Torres being that lead up guy. There's there's a lot of unsung heroes in the series too. Is like there's guys that have been there, done that. Let's not forget Freddie Freeman and Anthony Rizzo, two guys that have won the World Series, been in those big moments. There's the guys that the Dodgers, Yankees, are gonna have to rely on heavily. Obviously, Mookie Betts as well, World Series winner with the Red Sox. Those guys are, are and, and those those are the guys that these these relatively younger in terms of in terms of uh, uh, lineups, in terms of playoff and postseason experience, or World Series experience. Um, yeah. But but two two franchises obviously they have the, the experience for that. So uh, I'm ex- I expect big series out of Rizzo, Freeman, Betts, um, those guys that have been there, done that in the World Series. So uh, it, it could come down to which secondary bats uh, uh, win this series. Not necessarily. It's gonna it's gonna be the, the unsung heroes like we usually see in the World Series. It's funny to think about because the Dodgers do hold all that recent World Series experience with the guys that were on the team the most recent run. The only guy or one of the really only guys because one guy that is going to be on the bump for the Yankees to start off with, Garrett Cole, will get the first start of the World Series. He has World Championship experience but going back with Houston. But the other guy that has World Series experience is actually the youngest guy in that murderer's row that you have at 2 3 four. Juan Soto, I think, turns 26 in like a month. The dude is still 25 years old. He won a World Series with the Washington Nationals. Yes, the Washington Nationals won a World Series. Granted, it was pre-COVID. It was pre this show. It was pre everything was, like that. I was, was we were still was, in college. Was, yeah, first year, second year of college. It was brand new, brand spanking and, new. And he was 19 when he did yeah. that. He was able to carry a franchise that had literally won nothing in our lifetimes to a world championship. Juan Soto is I, – I get, I get, yes, the, the backup bats are going to have to do something. You're going to – the pitching staffs are going to figure out a way. They're going to figure out the combination. Maybe you walk Soto. Maybe you walk Judge. If you you know if those guys get a hold of it, the ball's going 500 feet. Like Juan Soto, a couple to at bats in that ALCS, literally fouled off every pitch until he got a fastball that he liked. And when he got the fastball that he was looking for, it went 500 feet into the triple deck. He he is seeing the ball so well, he can literally play a pitcher like a fiddle right now. He can get whatever pitch he wants because he knows all I got to do is foul off the breaking stuff. At some point, he's going to try and blow smoke by me, and I just got to get the bat off my shoulder, baby. If I get the bat off my shoulder, that thing's going to fly. Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton are the same way. Those games at Yankee Stadium, the Dodgers are going to have to be very careful and very diligent about how they pitch around that meat of the Yankees lineup because also, don't forget, that right field porch is going to be – that's what won the Yankees their last World Series. Everybody remembers all of the the main stars. You know who hit the game, the series clinching home run? Hideki Matsui, the lefty bat. He literally got an inside, really high and tight fastball, and he just turned the corner on that thing and hit it. I think with the barrel of his, it wasn't even the barrel of his bat, it's the handle of his bat, and he literally muscled that thing out of right field. The porch in right field of Yankee Stadium is going to be an X factor of the series. I guarantee that. Absolutely. I, I can't agree anymore. And like I said, this both lineups, it's, it's not going to be who you're going to pitch around because you clearly can't pitch around anybody in this lineup. Can't pitch around Otani because Betts there. Can't pitch around Betts. There's a Freeman there or Max Muncy or what or Will Smith. Can't pitch around uh, 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 Glaber Torres and Aaron Judge and 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 John Carlo and 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 Juan Soto. You can't. There's no one to pitch around with. That's why this bullpen is going to be the absolute X factor in this series. Because look, at, at, Otani will go yard. Juan Soto will go yard. It, it is not. It's not a matter of of how. It's a matter of when and 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 and, 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 what, and how they. And how that affects the game, excuse me. And how much damage are they causing? Because right now, exactly. Shohei's so. not hitting with anybody on base, so that's a saving grace for the Yankees. But if the Yankees' bats go cold and they start leaving runners on base, 
If the guys that set the table for the meat of that lineup, that is not going to be good. And 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 there's a lefty on the Dodgers, Otani, that can hit the ball probably out of that ballpark, and it does not need the easy ports to help him out. (laughs) No, and that's the thing where now home field advantage kind of does play a part because we're starting off at Dodger Stadium in L.A. So if the Dodgers can take care of business at home, right field, like I said, being an X factor, you can possibly steal one on the road. The Yankees are going to have to do their damnedest, and I think that's why, obviously, Garrett Cole's their ace, and you you normally throw your ace out in the first game. They're undecided for their second game. I think that they're pushing all their chips on the table in the game one to hopefully steal one in L.A. so that hopefully they can go up 3-1 when they go back to Yankee Stadium. They can use their home field advantage to their advantage. But I would say, as of now, early on in this series, I'm looking at the Dodgers, and I'm liking you know pitching staff. They have guys – in their rotation. They know what their rotation is going to be. They know who their bullpen rotation is. Like their manager is very scientific about all that stuff. And if I'm thinking about it, what team has recently been able able to get over that mental toughness hump and what team has recently been shut down by that hump? And it's the Yankees have been shut down. Whenever they need adversity, if they play the Houston Astros, the trash throws, like as they like to call them in the postseason, they're going to lose. The Dodgers, for a long time, when they get to a certain level in the playoffs, they're going to lose, but they were able to get the monkey off their back. I have a lot of faith in this Dodgers team. If I'm sitting here making a prediction before the season, and granted, I'm the one with more Yankees ties on this show than Nico does. I'm the one that actually has a little bit, like I I followed the Yankees a little bit when I was playing baseball growing up. I still sit here and I can see the Dodgers winning both games in L.A., stealing a game in New York, and possibly finishing this thing at five, just like they did the last time. The the one thing that obviously will help is is the the pitching matchup with Garrett Cole obviously having that World Series experience as well like I think it makes a ma- massive impact so we'll see it's gonna be interesting to see see what 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 guys show up and what these fall apart because um, there's one thing that I've learned over the past couple of years in baseball there are unsung heroes every single year that that. that Frankly, you and I have probably never even heard of where that guys are the seventh hole, eighth, eighth hole in the lineup. They were like, you know, this guy's pretty good, but I would never guess him to have a three home run game. Like it, it, it's just that that's how these World Series and playoffs in baseball go. So I'm excited to see how these two top level organizations and top level teams face off. All right, I let Nico made Nico talk about baseball long enough. Let's get into what he's really here for. This is he he even I told him that I wasn't going to have much time throughout the day, so he took the initiative and he filled out our document that we've been keeping for the season. He put all the division predictions on there. He's got everything all filled out. He is much like me, where I can go through all the NFL divisions. I can tell you who's in the NFC, AFC South. I can go alphabetical. What you want? He goes like that with basketball. So I'm going to be kind of flying by the seat of my pants i am going to give my predictions but nico's are more definitely more well thought out uh opening night was last night i believe right tuesday night was the the opener for all the nba games you are obviously going to be at the um nuggets home opener tomorrow you talked about that in center of attention back at the start of the show (coughs) what are your expectations for this season as a whole before we get into any specific team just nba season in 2024 2025 in general I, I am seriously – look, obviously the Celtics are, are a franchise that, that, that – a team right now that everyone's going to pencil in as a championship champions. I don't really see that. I think Boston is a very, very good team. Don't get me wrong. I still think that they're one of the best teams in the league. But I think there are five or six teams – in the, in the NBA that can make a case that if they get hot it cut hot in May uh, um, into June that, that they could easily win it. I, I see a, there is a lot of very, very top-level talent. And I'll even go even past it. The West is so unbelievably loaded, one through eight, probably one through ten. I can even go a little bit step further where there's some teams you just don't want to play. There's teams you do not want to play uh, um, in the Western Conference. Spurs could be a team you don't want to play with. Obviously, Wembenyama's second year. Houston Rockets got some better pieces. Obviously, the Jazz, probably not not as good. Portland, not as good. But those are still teams that, that play some teams tough. So, the West, like I said, there's a lot of lot of lot of variables that that will go into this year's playoffs and regular season run. Heck, we we saw two almost historic things last night. The first is is obviously LeBron and his son playing two minutes on the floor together, and, and Bronny getting uh, 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 because he should not be on the on the floor. That's why he didn't touch the floor after those three minutes. Sorry, I hate to say it, but he did. It was nothing like Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Sr. because Ken Griffey Jr. was way better than Ken Griffey Sr. ever was. You can back me up with the baseball guy here that he ever was. And you're telling me that Bronny is going to get play time this roster? No, he's not. He made the league. Congratulations, you're LeBron's son. You did this. You did something that has never been done before. Congratulations. 
we're past that. We are way past that. And you are, he's not cracking this lineup. So there's nobody on that Lakers roster that wants these minutes to be played right now. Nobody's sitting there thinking, Oh, what a cool story. This is LeBron got to do exactly what he wanted. He brought in his best friend to be the head coach and he got his son drafted by the organization way higher than he ever needed to be. And he's actually stunting his kids growth. That's the worst part about it. He's trying to be super dad and like pull the I'm LeBron James card. So I got my, first point I, I, into the I, league. I, I think that he could be a good, a decent, like maybe role player a couple years after college. He needed a few more years in college. He wasn't even in at USC. You need to act, at least lead a college team to some success before I trust you in the NBA, especially not to play opening night minutes. I, I've seen, I've seen Bronny play in person in high school, weirdly enough. And I worked at, I worked at a tournament where he was playing on that Sierra Canyon team with, with D Wade's kid and company. And, and he, look, he is a good talent. He's a great talent. I'm not going to be that for whatever reason, for whatever reason, I'm not going to hate on that. Okay. I will not be hating on that. He has, a, he has all the talent in the world possibility. He's way too young on this. He's more and, development. And, 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 for, and unfortunately, and, and I like your Bron, Bron, LeBron, James and Bronny fans cover years. He needs development. And right now he is not going to get run on this major league roster. Let's, let's be honest with you. Dalton Connect has already proven that he is going to be that next guy off the bench for the Lakers. I saw in game one, I saw in the preseason. They have Gary Trent Jr. They have these Jackson Hayes. They have three or four pieces off the bench already for this team. If he is going to do nothing, if he just sits on the bench there and watches his daddy play. Plain and simple. Like I, 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 I know this is early, but the, the kid needs to get some minutes on the South Bay Lakers. If because if the is he good, is back. he a G League talent? Is he good enough to play in the G League? And yes, and he is. Get, he he okay. is he is good enough to play in the G League. I've seen G League games. They're not the prettiest things. The world. That's all I'll say. He will start in the G League. Okay? You know That's, you have to yeah. break it down to me like I'm five. Yeah. I'm just I'm yeah. sitting here thinking if he needs more development in college, can he get that same development in the G League or is it going to be? Look, I'm not going to hate on the G League here, but there are three GCU players. And, and, and the G League that are currently getting actual playtime right now. And, and for no offense to us GCU basketball players, we're not there. There's a reason why not one Grand Canyon University basketball player has ever played in the NBA, but yet, yet, keyword yet, yet. but yes. yet, yet. yet. It's but, a but, that's what we call in teaching a growth yes. mindset. You don't have a fixed mindset that it's never going to happen. It just has not happened, has happened yet. yet. Exactly. Look at exactly. college football. Indiana thought they were never going to go undefeated. Kirk Sinetti came in and said, we haven't gone undefeated. Yes, yes, but exactly. you should Google me, Google me, and I win a lot. Okay, exactly, exactly. So, Bronny, I hope Bronny gets an opportunity to get minutes because, frankly, the Lakers look, JJ Reddick is a hell of a coach. I, 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 I know it. He knows the basketball better than anybody. Obviously, Coach K taught him very, very well, and he's a great mind of basketball, so he knows what he's doing. There's zero doubt that he, he knows what he's doing. So, so that's gonna be a, a massive upgrade from Darvin Ham. But the Lakers are going to be a big if, if if their stars can stay healthy and make that next leap. And then the other, obviously, big historic thing that almost happened on, on, on Tuesday night was the Celtics nearly broke the record for most amount of threes in an NBA game, Jimmy. They missed their last 16 threes to end that game to try to break it. The eight, there was eight eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Obviously, all the starters are out because the, because the Celtics just absolutely steamrolled the Knicks. They missed their last 16 threes to break the record of most amount of three-pointers in, in, in a regular season game or in, in an NBA game in general. So, look, the three-point the three point volume, I've already seen teams say that, 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 that they're going to try to shoot. The volume is even going to go higher up than it has in years past um, because of how, go, how good ins- – uh, Inside defenses have been so the three point shooting may go up this year even further, which is crazy, absolutely crazy to think about. So, um, like I said, there's, there's, I think five or six teams, and, and I'll, and I'll obviously I'll go into the divisions here in a second that I could see uh, uh, taking that next step and being a, a NBA Finals winner in 2025. All right, let's get into. I have it pulled up by division, division now. Let's start in the East because we always like to finish with the West um, and the Nuggets. Let's go with the uh, defending champions. The Atlantic division consists of the Boston Celtics, Brooklyn Nets, Philadelphia 76ers, New York Knicks, and the Toronto Raptors. All of these teams have played so far. The Boston Celtics are the only ones that have a win in their division. Everybody else is a game back. Obviously, the Boston Celtics are defending champions. They won their game by a 23-point differential. So that is kind of the – it's a good thing about early on in the NBA season is that you can see – what happened in, in game one, but it is also game one of, eight, of an 82 game season. We got 81 more of these to go. It is going to come down to who is able to handle their injuries best, who is able to make moves at deadlines if they need to, who is able to keep their mindset focused. Um, don't just play for individual awards. Let's actually play for some team success. 
I think that's what we have to say for this this division because we're literally got guys counting games like okay, I have to play forty six games to be eligible for postseason awards. Oh, oh Jimmy, I'm- there's there's it's, it's gotten worse. I don't know if, if if you heard the recent news. So let, first, before we jump into that, because I'm not even going to waste my time with these two teams. Nets are going to be one of the worst teams in the league. That's that's that. Let's just put that out there. They're going to be fun to watch because Cam Thomas. I watched him Wednesday night, literally pull fifteen threes, and I was like, Jesus Christ, this motherfucker has no. No, no limit. Just, just pulling three. So they're, they're, they're not going to be very good. They're not in a playoff team. Don't worry about that. Raptors have young pieces. Not going to be a whole lot in this, in, in this, in the East. I think they could sneak into the play and um, be a tough out. But I don't think that that's that's probably the ceiling for them. The next three, obviously, I have the Celtics as number one. They're, they're, I think they'll have the best record in the regular season by far and away. They're still loaded with talent. Um, they they add they basically brought back the entire roster. So I still so very, still very high on what they're going to do. I have the Knicks as the second best team. I think this is going to take some time for the Knicks, though, because if let's not forget, Mikael Bridges' trade happened in a, like a month after the season. So like that July. this has been yeah. no, July. I mean, this has been known for a while. The Carthy Mountain Towns trade happened the day before the first preseason game. This this group is still figuring out. I'm pretty sure Thibodeau is still trying to figure out how to mesh this group together because. They only have 12 guys on the roster also. So they have to sign three other dudes on two-way contracts by two weeks or they get fined. Fun fact, by the way. So, But I, I'm confident that the Knicks will figure it out. Thibodeau's a great coach. I love what Bronson's doing. And, and Kat is obviously um, – he, he's, he's nuggets sore. And I'm so happy that he, he's out of the West. for that. That's for sure because I think he makes Minnesota weaker. Um, but the Sixers – it, it's wild. It, it, it's wild that 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 this for, they think this formula can work. It, it is wild they think this formula can work. Joel B came out and said that I will not be playing back to backs. This is before game one of the season, by the way. Game one of the season. If you're not healthy, then fucking do what Kawhi Leonard's doing. Sit your ass down. Plain and simple. Because because I, I do not understand. I do not understand how the Sixers can stay here and be like, you know what? We just added Paul George. Tyrese Maxey is, a, is is coming into his own. Uh, um, we have a lot of great young pieces on this team. This team can we can make a really good run of that. Then you remind yourself, oh wait, the Sixers are going to be in playing game, playing again because their guys don't play during the regular season. And then when they play in the postseason, they don't show up. They don't show up. So, so Sixers fans, frankly, I'd be more upset with Joel Embiid than anybody because he is he is going to be the detriment detriment of this team as much as he's going to help your team. That's that that's the worst part about it is because Tyrese Maxey at some point is going to be looking like it, it, look I, I I I accumulate this to to something that happened in the late two thousands when and Kobe talked about this when he played with Shaq. Shaq was out for two months. And, and 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 with an injury during that 01 or maybe 02 season, and Co- and Phil Jackson went up to Kobe and said, "You're our offense. You ha- everything is going to be run through you." And Kobe was averaging 40 points per game during that two month span. Kobe Shaq comes back and the Lakers lose five or five or eight of the last ten. So Phil Jackson sits down with Kobe like, "You need to take a step back. This is this is also Shaq's team." That slowly. Molded the relationship that 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 broke that that those great Lakers teams apart when when Shaq and Kobe separated and, and obviously uh, Shaq went to Miami and, and the hit and the rest is history. This Sixers team, if you're telling Tyre, if if I'm uh, Nick Nurse and I'm like Tyreek Maxey, our offense is centered around you for half of our games. But wait, when George is Paul George is playing and when Joel Embiid was actually a third option, that messes with a young kid's head. Messes with the young kids ahead a ton. So I, I look. I think the Sixers got a lot better. Obviously, Paul George helps this team a lot more than, than not having anybody there. So I think the, Six, the Sixers could make a run at this if they're healthy and if they're healthy. Yeah. And, and obviously, we have a, they played one fucking game, and, and I already know that they're not healthy. Like, like this is before. Like, like, I, I, this is this is insane. Absolutely insane to me. Did Embiid get his? Uh, well, I guess he didn't win the MVP trophy. He's under, he's oh, I'm under, sorry. I'm sorry, Philly fans. I'm sorry. Did I do that on purpose? He's under investigation by the NBA for sitting out games on purpose. They are. There is a w- real investigation happening that the NBA. That, that I'm pretty sure the Sixers are saying this. That we are. You are contracted to play 82 games, healthy, healthy, and and he is just just actively doing not sitting out back to backs. That sets a horrible precedent for this league. Horrible precedent for this league. You know how pissed off Jimmy and I would be, or Jimmy would be, if Joe Burrow said, I, I don't only really want to play 12 of the 17 games. 
I don't, I, I don't like to play two road games in a row. I don't, I don't like playing two road games in a row. NFL does it. Obviously, it's entirely different because it's back to back games as opposed to a week difference. But, but you're telling me that you cannot, you sign up for 82 games. If you're not healthy, don't fucking play. Don't Mayfield, fucking this play. is, this is the argument that's always brought up with these two no, winners sports look, between am, hockey and I, basketball. I, and I am watching Kawhi Leonard sit his ass on the bench again for the Clippers for a third straight year. Just get paid. Just get paid. Just fucking do that if you don't fucking care. Because you're not healthy, then don't play. It's the CBA is too powerful. You got guaranteed contracts, and for whatever reason, these players have adopted the attitude that they don't need to play. It goes back to LeBron tweeting about having to get on a plane and fly to Minnesota for a preseason game. Guess what? You signed a fucking contract. You've been contracted since you were 18 years old. You know that that's in your contract. That's part of the deal. You're a professional athlete. You have to play the games. If you don't play the games, shit doesn't work. Wow. You don't make the playoffs. You don't make championship runs. It's Look wild. at guys like the guys that have sat out and have missed big time in the NHL. Those teams have not done well, whether they've had high expectations or not. Which is why my I think I'm going to be, I guess I'll try and be the hot take guy because I really don't necessarily know what I'm talking about. These are preseason predictions, and nobody nobody <laughs> listens to me when I pick basketball anyways. I think that the Celtics will probably win this uh, division. I think that they have a good chance of being the number one seed in the Eastern Conference again. I don't necessarily think they walk through. Like, that was going to be a once-in-a-lifetime walk through the playoffs last year, only losing, what was it, three games? They, they didn't even lose four games, enough to actually lose a series. Um, I think with the Knicks – it scares me that they only have 12 because Thibodeau is their coach. And I know that they have a certain day that they have to get to until they get fined. Thibodeau is the type of coach that will play those 12 guys into the ground and then sign three guys on the very last day. And like, oh, I was just evaluating, like giving a really good evaluation, both of my guys that I have here and the three guys that we needed to bring in. Like Tibbs is, is a crazy psycho coach. Maybe that, that – what, what killed the Knicks last year? Injuries. Getting ran into the ground. Couldn't stand up to the Celtics after, what, game three? I don't think they, they were able to do anything, even even make things close. There's a chance, I think, in my mind, that the Knicks start off slow and end up having to claw their way back, and maybe the 76ers figure something out early on in the season. They just hold on to whatever lead they're able to get until the Knicks get fully healthy. But like you said, the, the Sixers are, are unhealthy too. I think it's the Celtics and whoever the hell else figures it out. Toronto, New York, or Toronto, Brooklyn. Thank you for playing basketball. Thank you for being the Carolina Panthers of the NBA. Uh, I guess that's what I'll say. And being the Carolina Panthers of the NBA isn't even all that good because you're not guaranteed the number one overall pick. What, what do you get, a 60% chance of possibly getting the number one overall pick or probably even the, less the, than that? The, the biggest storyline of, of the Nets and the, the the worst team, in my opinion, in the next division we'll, we'll talk about here now, is is guys coming back from injury and just having their first run. The Nets having Ben Simmons healthy, who, 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 what am I going to watch? Who, who the hell is going to be playing out there? And now the next one, we'll jump into the central now. The Bulls obviously having Lonzo Ball back. He has not played in two full seasons now, and, and he is finally back uh, um, getting his legs underneath him, making shots back on the floor, which I'm very, very excited to see. He obviously he uh, off the court stuff. It, it, it is what it is, but but he is he I wasn't heard much out of his dad or his it's because it's, it's, because because the first of all, Lamelo plays on the other worst team in the league and the Charlotte Hornets, and then obviously Lonzo hasn't played in two years, so that's why you haven't really heard from them much. Um, so I'm ex- I, I think the Bulls are going to suck. I, I, frankly, they're they're going to be so bad. Uh, Demar Derozan is is in Sacramento. This he they lost they lost Alex Caruso for, and they brought in Josh Giddy. This is going to be one of the worst teams in the league. The Bulls are not going to be good. The Bulls are going to have one th- one key piece that that they they can hold on to, and it is Zach Levine, hoping that LeBron wants to trade trade his own son for him, because at this, that's that's the only that's the only thing that they that they they'll be able to get in return uh, um, for anything, because they are in a rebuild mode like no other, and the Zach Levine is a trade piece that they can dangle out there for a contending team that has cap space. Next worst team I have Pistons. I think they take a step forward this year. I, I'm excited to see what Kate Cunningham and and, and Duran does for them. And see if they can take those next up. I think they're a better team. I don't think they're a playing team for that matter. They may be a playing team because of how bad the East is. Uh, but I have the top three. I have the Pacers winning the division, being one of the best teams in, in, in one of the best teams in the East. I, I'm really excited to see what Halliburton does in the second year um, and seeing what seeing what Miles Turner fully healthy you have looks the Pacers like. Pacers over the Bucks. I do have the Pacers over the Bucks. Bucks are a team that another team that can't stay healthy. So so I I. I 
I, I, I'm 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 out on the Bucks to start the season. I still think they're going to be Eastern Conference final contender, um, but I don't think that they're 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 going to win this division because I'm that high on the Pacers this year. So I go Pacers, Bucks, Cavs, Cavs. Uh, if you want to listen to Cleveland talk, go to listen to Ohio sports friends over there. Um, not and then I have Pistons, Bulls. So uh, I think the Pacers are, are a team that that has a great regular season. I don't think that they make the finals though, or make these cross finals, and I don't think that they uh, maximize this window. But they're very young and a team that. Can they could make a lot of noise. They scored so many points last year, especially into the playoffs. Like if you can continually score 130 points, you have you're giving yourself at least a chance for overtime almost every night. Shore up the defense and you're winning and, and you're winning the division like you're you're predicting. Um my thing about this division, I've been thinking about the the Cavs over the last couple seasons because it's like they're they're getting better. They made the playoffs, they're winning some series, but then I think about this offseason and like I know that they got a new coach. But I haven't necessarily heard a lot of buzz around this new coach. Like, yeah, the, the, I mean, the, not going to come in and, yeah. and just change things overnight. So, did they really take the steps that they needed to to get better? They were young. They needed to bring in a little bit more experience. I I did not hear anything about them taking those right steps. So, to me, I do think that they're probably going to fall off. And the top two teams in the division will be Milwaukee and, and Indiana. I tend to lead Milwaukee because I've doubted Giannis before. And if he comes back and plays a majority, they're they're a damn good team. Yeah, Dame is obviously very all world too, and, and the Bucks are a very good team. This Cavs team, what I thought the what what I thought the Cavs are going to be are what the Pacers are. Pacers development have has skyrocketed. I thought Evan Mobley, Darius Garland, who is an All Star, adding the Donovan Mitchell onto this team, I thought was really going to take this team to the next level, and it really has not even close. It really has not yet. So maybe it's a maybe it's a make or break a year for this core, and you try to trade some of these young pieces, and and and, and try to get another star or something along those lines, and try to break up this up. Maybe it's the coach, whatever it may be. But I still see the Cavs as the third best team in this division, and I don't think that's even a hot take. So yeah, I just I was hoping for more out of their off season, and and they just kind of sat there and waited and waited and waited and did nothing of note. It's not like they they changed their their future overnight. Next division, we have the Southeast. This is where you said you have one of your other worst teams in the league, the uh, Charlotte Hornets, who actually won their game. They won by five the other night, so Lamelo was able to get his, his boys a win. But uh, is it? It's the I, I, division, I, I, right? I'm, I'm still, I'm still so low on all. this division. Frankly, sucks outside of two teams, and it's and it's it's. Saying two teams is a stretch, frankly. Okay, saying two teams is a stretch because everyone look. Miami is a good team. Don't win the division. Plain simple. Miami is a good team. Jimmy Butler healthy. Bam Adebayo healthy. Um, they're Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson company. They're still a playoff team. They'll be the, they'll be the best team in this this conference or division, no doubt in my mind. The Magic is the, the 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 big wild card in this entire scenario because obviously they add KCP uh, um, off our team. You have Banchero coming off an all-star season. You have the Wagner twins uh, at, at the big man position. You're, and Cole Anthony and, and Jalen Suggs. Great. You have a lot of very, very, very good young talent. I think the Magic are a team that obviously makes the playoffs. I think they're a team that, 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 that could make a lot of noise early on because of how young and, and, and hungry they are. Hungry you are. I think that's what KCP was looking at when he joined them, frankly. Um, so I, I'm, I think the Magic will be the second best team in this division um, behind behind the Heat. I have Hawks, Wizards, Hornets are the last three. I think uh, uh, the Wizards uh, uh, drafting Rissa Shear. I think I think that I know. Sorry, the the Hawks had drafting Rissa Shear, uh, the French guy with the first overall pick, should help them in the long run. I'm excited to see what he he forms into his own. I don't think they're going to be much. I I, I I worry about their long-term. Is Trey Young going to pass them the ball? Yeah, that's the great question. The Hawks will be a playing team because, like I said, I talked about four teams or five teams that are already bad in this conference, and I have to throw somebody else into the play-in because only two teams don't make the play-in. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw in the Hawks as a play-in team, possibly eight seed. The Wizards, if they if their youth development gets there, they could be hungry. The Hornets. Like I said, I don't have faith in them, but I, if, if Brandon Miller, um, obviously the four from Alabama, and the Mellow Ball finally gel together, they could take that next step and be in a conversation for the eight seed. Um, but I don't see it yet. I think we're a couple years away from that. So, all right, I um, for this one, I'm 
it's going to be Miami, Orlando, the Florida teams. They're getting a lot of uh, free agents in both football, basketball, and hockey because of that no state tax. So I think they they got themselves better. Um, Washington, I can never put faith in them. So I guess I'll go uh, Miami, Orlando, Atlanta, Washington, Charlotte. That, that'll be my prediction for the Southeast. It's, it, if you, you, you can tell by my voice, I'm very confident in my answers. Very, very confident. I'm Spot on. I, I can't wait to predict the NBA season championship preseason before you. I, I don't watch any of these games. I apologize. But just being honest, brutally honest. Uh, moving into the West, let's start out Southwestern Conference. This is the Pelicans, Mavs, Spurs, Grizzlies, and Rockets. The Pelicans got a win the other night by 12. Looks like they beat the Rockets. Is that is that who they played? Uh, yes, the Pelicans played the Rockets. On yeah. Wednesday night. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see how this one shakes out. Dallas has obviously a lot of expectations after a conference finals run, but NBA finals team, run, a team that NBA lost finals it. run. Um, yep. that, it'll be interesting. What do you see out of this one? Obviously, the Mavs, the the big offseason additions. There, there were some big offseason additions in this in this in this group. Like, like obviously the Mavericks signing Clay Thompson. That's a big time move. The Pelicans, a little bit under the radar move. They brought in Dejounte Murray. I think that he he's he's been kind of rotting in Atlanta the last couple of years. I think he could be a massive piece to help this team. The Grizzlies bring in, uh, uh, um, obviously bringing back Jaw. And, and 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 bringing in Zach Purdy, so so or or, or uh, yeah, so 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 like the, the tall dude from Purdue. So it it's it's this or maybe it's not Zach Purdy. I don't know, if, fucking uh, Zach Eady, Zach Eady. There it is, Zach Eady. There's there's the name I was thinking, Zach Eady. Um, so the Grizzlies have some big guys that, that they can run the team, and then obviously. Wembenyama, <laughs> Wembenyama is is in year two, and and finally has Chris Paul. Right, he has a guy that's going to pass him the ball. I think. I think. I, I don't. I can't confirm that, but he had nobody to pass him the ball last year, and now Chris Paul. That's his only thing is to pass him the ball. So uh, I, I go. I'm going to go Mavs to 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 obviously that championship pedigree. Adding Thompson helps a little bit. Um, I have the winning division. I have Pelicans too. Um, this division, I think Pelicans take that next step again. Uh, uh, Brandon Ingram is going to have a great year. Dejounte Murray, I think, is going to be a really really great complemental piece, um, and they have a lot of young exciting defensive wings that really make this team hungry. I have the Grizzlies third. I think the Grizzlies are going to take time to try to get back to where they were uh, um, two years ago when they when they were the top two team in the West going going into the playoffs. So I think they wait. I think the Spurs are a play-in team. I, I, and I think they're a team that can sneak into the eighth seed. Obviously, I don't – I hate Chris Paul. But Wembenyama is, is – I think – takes that next step, and it could be that all-star L pro level. Uh, the Rockets, I don't have a whole lot of faith in. Jalen Green, company, uh, 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 their team that, that, that frankly, is, is three, four years away from, from from really being a tough team in the West, in my opinion. So uh, they don't really ha- – like, like I said, Jalen Green's a good talent, but I don't, I don't see them making a massive move uh, uh, and, and, and t- skyrocketing like the Spurs are uh, or, 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 like, or like the Pacers are or, or along that matter. So – I have Mavs, Pelicans, Grizzlies, Spurs, Rockets. I, it's interesting to me because watching the Olympics and seeing what Wemby was able to do with a whole bunch of uh, French European players, I do think that they were a very talented team, and it's obviously a different game, but that was impressive to just see what he did at the end of the NBA regular season into the Olympics. Interested to see what he's going to look like under another season of preseason with the NBA team. He now knows what his role is. He's he's the star. He's the star of the making. He's going to be the franchise for the next however many years that they're able to sign him. I think that he's going to be scary, but in this division, I do, I've seen the Pelicans, especially the way that they like to beat the Nuggets on Christmas day. It tend to be the only NBA game I watch and the Pelicans always make me pissed off. And like, why the, this is why I don't watch basketball. Okay. This is why um, they're very talented. I think that they're going to give anybody a run for their money with Dallas, the way they ended their season, the defense that they played, if they can get a semblance of that, Dallas will be a dangerous team. I can see them going and, and winning this division, but I, I see the Spurs as a possibility of finishing two over the the Pelicans, depending on how Wemby takes that next step going into his sophomore season. So we're a little bit pretty much the same, but a little bit different. Let's move on to um, our next division here, the Pacific, L.A., the Lakers, the Clippers, the Golden State Warriors, Phoenix Suns, and the Sacramento Kings. Are we going to like the Bean this year? Are they going to finally – 
get make it back to the playoffs, do it back to back seasons, or are we looking for disappointment out there in the Bay Area? I, I'm gonna gonna start hot here because because cover cover your ears, uh, fat boy fa- fat boy fade away, and, and all our friends in California, the Warriors are gonna be the worst team in this division. It's weird. It's very weird saying that the Suns obviously Kevin Durant company very very good. They're gonna they're gonna be a, a team. Obviously, having adding Tyus Jones, um, adding adding a couple pieces here and there, the Suns team still have three top talents in Beal, Booker, and, and Durant. They're going to be very, very good. I love the addition of DeMar DeRozan at the Kings. I think he is going to add so much dimension defensively and offensively to make De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis' lives so much e- easier offensively. So I think they're the second-best team. I put the Lakers third. Um, I, I think that they're still playing team. That's that's how highly I think of the other teams in the West. Uh, but I have the Lakers third. Uh, I think JJ Redick does make some big strides with this team and, and puts him in the right track. I go Clippers four and Warriors five. Clippers, obviously Kawhi Leonard is out indefinitely. They're going to be heavily, heavily relying on James Harden to to, and, and to to pull that team out of the rut into in their new into it dome um, at home. James, so, no strip clubs. No strip clubs now, James. Stay I away from strip club buffet. I know it's tempting. I look. I, I think the Warriors are going to get. They need to get younger. First of all, they need to play Pajemski, Kaminga, Moody, um, company, and try try to get these young pieces going in the right direction. Um, I don't think Steph can get this team out of the hole. I worry. I, I, I honestly worry so much about them be, staying in the plan. I could be so dead wrong because I obviously talk about championship pedigree, this, that, and the other thing. This championship pedigree is nearly gone. It's nearly yeah, gone. Dr- it's Dr- it's Dr- Steph and Draymond. It, Dr- Dr- it's, it's, very clear, it's not even Draymond anymore because Draymond can't even be relied on to close games at this point because of how low his offensive rating has gone. So it's Steph, and, and can, he, can he carry these young bucks? That's that's literally the, the ML for this Warriors team. So that's why I have them as low as I can. I hope to be proved wrong because I think – Clippers and Warriors are very interchangeable. Frankly, the Lakers, Clippers, and Warriors are very interchangeable to me. I think the Suns and the Kings are the two best teams in this division. I might be totally off on this, and Darren, keep those keep those earmuffs on. Is there a possibility, because he did play with LeBron, and we know how LeBron likes to bring his friends in, maybe it's not the Lakers, but He's is there a possibility gonna... that Steph leaves Golden State? He's not. First of all, I, I – I would think that the Warriors would rather roll over in their grave than trade him to the Lakers, is all I'm going to say. If LeBron were to go play in fucking Charlotte, I don't know, or somewhere else, maybe. But it's not that never in a million thousand years. And Steph Curry is going to be a forever warrior. I think they had their little fun over the summer, and that's as much as they're ever going to get. Unless LeBron wants to join the Warriors, which I don't think is going to happen. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think that Steph is going to have to just build, hopefully build these young guys up and, and try to go at another run with a new young group and, and, and produce off of them. Ain't no way in hell I'm picking the Los Angeles Lakers or Clippers to win this division. Um, I'll go Kings, Kings, Suns, uh, Clippers, just to troll Terrell a little bit. And then the Warriors, I'll, I'll keep Warriors last. I'm sorry, Darren. I love you. I'm sorry. I missed the show, but I had a hell of a time at the Hardy concert on Sunday. Um, that's probably why my voice is failing as much as it is along with the lack of sleep and the just physical exhaustion that I'm feeling. But, uh, just to make things interesting, I'll go Sacramento wins the Pacific and, uh, makes, Bet makes good on their huge season last year. That leaves us with the one that we're paying the most attention to, the one that you're going to be in attendance tomorrow night. Uh, is Jokic getting his MVP trophy tomorrow? They, He's already they, got no, his MVP. They, they gave it to him during the playoffs last year. That's one thing that the NBA does. They can be but he is a playoffs. returning three out of the last four MVP, probably the best player in the world. We saw what he did in the Olympics. I talked about Wemby's Olympic run. Jokic's Olympic run was him and a whole bunch of guys that work at 7-Elevens out in Serbia. <laughs> That's it. The guys that he pays to ride in his chariots because he's too big for his horses to carry him and drag him around. Um, Jokic is still good enough. This team, they can just figure out not, you know, figure out the non-Jokic minutes. That's what this has always been over the last six years. Figure out the non-Jokic minutes where he doesn't have to play 48, a consistent 82 games, and this team will be just fine. I think last year was the lesson in maybe we don't need the number one overall seed. Maybe it is good to make sure everybody's good to go for the playoffs 100% because something wasn't right with Jamal last year. 
And Calvin Booth coming out and saying that he wasn't in good enough shape. Like I, we, we talked about it already at nauseum. That's not something that a general manager should be doing. The contract situation was weird, but it's taken care of. He signed. He's here. Aaron Gordon signed. He's here. We brought in the pieces that we brought in. we got to develop new pieces into our starting five. But the bench is what the Nuggets need to focus on. How are the Nuggets going to address their bench and make sure that this season finishes more successfully than a second-round exit like last year? Well, obviously, I talked about this to Sarah Tension. I love the addition of Darius Arch. I, I cannot stress this enough. I know no one gives a fuck about who Darius Arch is, but I do because I think he is going to be the perfect, the perfect piece. This is the exact piece. This is, I'm not talking about Darius Arch like I am talking about Aaron Gordon three years ago when I, when I said that, hey, we add Aaron Gordon to this team. He's the X Factor. I think Darius Arch could be an X Factor off this bench. This could be our Jeff Green from a couple of years ago. This could be our our, 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 our Jermichael Green, whatever it may be. This is our secondary piece that is going to consistently come in, get rebounds, play good defense, knock down open shots. That's what you need off the bench. And, and like I said, the, the versatility of, of Sarge playing with Jokic, playing with AG, uh, um, and, 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 and being able to play the four and five very, very easily, I think can go a very, very long way, especially if Jokic is, misses time for whatever reason for injury throughout the season. Knock on wood, it doesn't happen. Um, obviously, Westbrook, I everyone knows that I don't love Russ. I, I only hate Chris Paul more um, in terms of point guards. So I, I, I'm interested to see. I want him to win me over. Let me just make that clear. I want him to win me over. Win me over, Russ. Win me over. Make play the bring these young guys like Julian Strother, Peyton Watson, uh, um, um, Christian Brown up to the forefront of, of, of what it takes to be an all world talent elite. Do that to these young guys and be an exciting energizer piece off the bench, and, and you will be just fine. You will be just fine with me. Heck, you could close games out for us. I don't give a fuck as long as we win. I, I don't care. As long as you make the right decision, get the ball to 1 5, get the ball to 2 7, I'll be just fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. No threes. No threes. No, 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 no. You don't shoot that ball. You get next to the rim, you either get an easy lay in where you're driving to the hole or you're dishing it out. You ain't shooting. No, I'm so we're um, like I said, if he starts hitting threes, my God, look out! Be, oh. We're in trouble. I'm well, like the said, Nuggets. I, uh, what you said about threes kind of worries me for the Nuggets because the Nuggets are the worst statistic shooting three point team in the league over the last three years, at least of the playoff teams. I don't know about all the the really bad teams, but the three point shooting's been terrible. That's just not the way that our offense is set up. We, we, you, like, you I know, I know, I know. Efficient. I know what you're saying when you say that, but I also have the statistic pulled up of Michael Porter Jr. having the third highest three point percentage in the league behind Steph Curry, and I believe it was Clay Thompson. It might have been I forgot who the second place was. But he's a top five three point shooter in terms of, of in terms of output and percentage. So yes, I get that, but and, but you're it's telling one me, guy. I know it's one guy. The, it's going to, the development. It, it's on three guys, and I, and I cannot stress this enough. There's three guys where this is a maker. And I'll throw in four because you kind of throw this guy into four guys make a break season. Obviously, Christian Brown taking in that starter starting role, which we all believe will happen. I'm not; it's not confirmed yet, but all points are pointing toward him being the starting shooting guard. It's Christian Brown. It's Julian Strother, who I just talked about, who had a great preseason, who had a great who had a great summer league, which I'm very very excited to see and take that next step. It's Peyton Watson, who got a lot of time during the regular season last year, but could not be relied upon offensively during the playoffs, so his minutes got decreased. And then you can throw in Zeke Naji as well. <laughs> Excuse me, you can throw in Zeke Naji as well if you want to have another big man counterpiece if the guy gets injured for whatever reason to, to help you throughout the season. So those are the four guys where this is – and I'm not going to say it's going to make or break the season on those four guys, but I'm going to, I'm going to need to rely on two, two or three of those guys to give me playoff minutes. Plain and simple. I'm going to have to rely on two or three of those guys because right now, if I were to pick a, 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 a rotation of, of playoff rotation, it is Jamal, uh, Christian Brown, Michael Porter Jr., A.G., Nicole Jokic, obviously the starting five. And then I throw Sarich in there. I throw Russ. And that third spot is either going to be Julian Strother or Peyton Watson, depending on if you need offense or defense. I need Christian Brown, Peyton Watson, and, and Julian Strother to not make that difficult of a decision. Make 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 the easy, hey, I can check this guy in and, and know that I can get offensive output or defensive output from them. So that 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 that's my big here thing here. So let's let, let's jump into to the division because I don't think the Nuggets win this division. Frankly, I don't give a fuck about winning the division. I, I, I care about winning the championship. Everyone knows that. So I think the Thunder are gonna have the best record in the West. Uh, just plain and simple. I love the additions of Caruso, I love the additions of Hartenstein. Um Obviously, they're a very young team, and it showed a lot. Shea can take that next step. Uh, uh, obviously, Chet is, is 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 in his second full year now. He's going to have a massive impact. The Thunder will have, the set, I think, the best record in the West. 
I don't know if that turns into anything, but they will. I think we have us at two. I really think the Wolves got worse I, I, when they traded Cat. The matchup with the Denver Nuggets got way easier when you play the Minnesota Timberwolves now. Because, frankly, you can stash Jokic on Gobert now, and your AG can guard Julius Randle much easier than he can guard Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns, frankly, 100%. So, and, I, and look, this this Wolves team add Rob Dillingham, which didn't get he didn't get any run on opening night, which I thought was very interesting. This their their wings and defense are, and their offense is going to be heavily heavily rely on Anthony Edwards heavily. I cannot trust Rudy Gobert to 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 be my offensive centerpiece on on some nights. I cannot trust Mike Conley at thirty five years old or whatever it is now to be an offensive centerpiece. I can be have be great secondary pieces. Anthony Edwards. Which I think he could do. I, I, don't get me wrong. I think he could do this, but I expect him to to take over games. But can he do it for a full eighty-two game season? That's the thing. I look. I and then I have Jazz Blazers. Those two teams suck. I'm not even going to waste my time there. I, I the, the there look the Western Conference uh, is going to be represented by a team from the Northwest Division. That, that, that I am just going to put that out there. It'll be either the Thunder Nuggets or Wolves in the in the NBA Finals representing the West. I don't think the Mavs return. I don't have a lot of faith in the Suns, Kings, Lakers going on that long run. Um, I think it'll be between those three teams who represents the West uh, going against possibly Boston. So, uh, look, obviously the divisions in the basketball, who, who gives a fuck? They're just kind of there just to be there. It doesn't really matter at, at this point, like, like NBA or NHL does. So, uh, um, it is what it is, but I expect the Thunder to be the best team in the West. I expect the Nuggets to be a top four team, the Wolves to be a top four team, uh, Mavs to be a top four team, or sorry, Suns to be a top four team, Mavs to be a fifth, and six. Um, that's how that's how it's going to go. So, like I said, we don't need to win the division. We don't need to win the conference. Frankly, we just need to be healthy at the right time and and, and play our best basketball come May and and, and, and late April. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited. This this West conference is very 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 open. I t- I could like there's only like two or three teams where I push over in the West, and it's probably the Rockets, Jazz, Blazers, and that's about it. Spurs are going to tough out as as bad as they are. Warriors are going to be tough out even if they have a worse record. There's a lot of the West is is West is fun basketball. As I'm going to say, it's fun to watch Western Conference basketball. That brings us to our title predictions in October. So as as of now, who are your NBA champ? Who's the NBA champion? Who's the matchup? Who's the champion? Out of the teams that we've talked about, I have my Western Conference final. I have Nuggets over the Thunder in seven. I, 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 I think in that's, seven. That's, that's, in seven. In, I, so we win it in OKC. Yes, I, I, I think that's that's the heartbreaker there for the Thunder fan being that close, and I think that the Nuggets take overcome that. So I have us in seven. I take the Celtics over the Knicks in five. I think that the Celtics roll over the East again this year. I think they roll over the East. So do they? Do they meet that three loss total? Yes, they, they okay. do because the Nuggets beat them in seven. Nuggets over the Celtics in seven. Nuggets so we win in OKC and in Boston. Yes, that's that's Ooh. that's uh, that's that's that's, uh, that's, 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 that's hot. That's hot. That's hot. It's that's starting. Hot. Get, it's starting to get cold. It's we're almost we're have, right around have, the corner of winter, I, and it's hot. I know, I know everybody's out on this team because of KCP. I, last time I checked, the best motherfucker basketball player on the planet is still playing on this team. It is he is one five. Or is one is he or is he not suited up in navy and white, Jimmy? He is. Do I or do I not have a pulse? You do. The Denver Nuggets will win the 2024-2025 NBA championship over the Celtics. Book it. Okay. Um, I am going to go. I want to have a fun matchup. Uh, I gotta have the fun matchup. I'm the fun guy here. Let's see. I will say T Wolves and Nuggets in the NBA Western Conference Finals. I say that the Nuggets are pissed off and they sweep. So the Nuggets get a sweep in the conference finals, just like we did when we won the championship a couple years ago. We had the sweep in the opening round, sweep in the in the conference final round. For the Eastern Conference, I, I, I'm full New York. Let's go. Bing bong, baby. Bing bong. The Knicks are back. And the Nuggets get a six-game NBA championship run. It's similar to what they did to the Miami Heat. I think the Nuggets were – why not? We'll both predict the Nuggets to get it done in October. Hopefully, I, this I, doesn't sound so ridiculous by the I end of the season. I truly believe that the Denver Nuggets have the best chance of beating Boston. Let me, let me let me let me make that very clear. I think OKC, if they get to the NBA Finals, and we don't get there, I think that Boston could roll them in five like they did against Dallas. Frankly, 
I think that they're inexperienced. I think they'd be too, too not ready for the limelight. I think Boston could roll over them like no other. Uh, uh, Minnesota, I think that'd be a little bit tougher series. I don't think they match up as well now with Julius Randle and, and their outside shooting and offensively and compared to Boston's defense. I think the Denver Nuggets, and, and I'm serious when I say this, I think they have the best shot of being Boston. We beat them twice last year. The only team to have a winning record, by the way, over the Boston Celtics last year were the Denver Nuggets. Let's not forget about that. The only team in the league, and we swept them, 2-0. So I, 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 I honestly think that we have the best shot of beating them. And, that, and that's how highly I think of the Celtics team and how good and how well conducted or constructed they are. So if, if anyone's going to beat them, why not us? All right, there you have it. We will uh, make graphics. We'll have everything. We'll keep everybody updated. We will look back at these at the end of the NBA season and see how close were we, how close were we not. The Knicks, if they don't make the playoffs, I'm going to seem like an even They're bigger moron than I already the East, am. The East sucks. They'll make the playoffs. Don't worry. They'll make the playoffs. <laughs> What's the, I need an Eastern Conference Finals run at least. I need to feel good about myself going into June and, and, and July. NHL predictions, eh? Let's move over to the hockey side of things. I, I got the wild card standings pulled up because this is the best way to kind of look at what the playoff brackets will look like. We have over a week of games for most teams. Some teams have played nine. I think the lowest – Game total that I see right now is five. So everybody's had at least a business week of games. Starting in the Eastern Conference, that is where the defending Stanley Cup champions reside. The Florida Panthers right now lead the Atlantic by one point over the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning got a little bit worse losing their captain in Stamkos, but they brought in, brought back McDonough, which is going to help them huge on their back end, especially because Vasilevsky has not been the Vasilevsky that we saw uh, during those Tampa Bay Lightning Stanley Cup championship runs. He needs a better defense in front of him. And they still have Braden Point. They still have Nikita Kucherov. Steven Stamkos was a second, possibly third-line center at best. You keep him around because he is your C, and that guy should have been a, a lifer as a Tampa Bay Lightning. But Tampa doesn't look like they're falling that far off, and they still have John Cooper. Ottawa right now, even with Brady Kachuk kind of being up and down on the lineup, he's been kind of banged up. Uh, I don't see Ottawa keeping that spot. In the Atlantic, I see probably uh, Boston. Boston, no, Boston's Metro, aren't they? No, Can't Boston's remember. Atlantic. Boston, Boston Atlantic. I, I think Boston's probably going to get that third spot. I don't necessarily see them winning the division. I think Florida is still good enough, and and they still have something to prove. Um, I see Boston being the third playoff team out of that division. So I I see it as Florida, Tampa, and then Boston, um, Ottawa, and Buffalo are are a little bit further behind than. The, those other teams that we're talking about. Yeah, and, and like I said, I, I have, I have, I have Panthers, I have Leafs, and I have Bruins as, as, as. Oh, you, you're, as, you're as giving the Leafs team. a little bit more faith. I, I know. I threw the Leafs in there. I have the Lightning as my wild card. I think they're getting older, so I, lo I worry a little bit about the Lightning. Um, so, and I think that the Leafs. They're not – look, everyone knows they're a regular season team. So I'm pretty confident that they'll be one of the three, I think, in my opinion. I, I don't like, I don't think that they'll make go on this long run like I have predicted the last couple of years for whatever fucking reason. But but I, I do think that they'll be a regular season team. So so I'll go – I go Panthers, Leafs, Bruins being the three, uh, Lightning being the wild card team. I do think that the Red Wings uh, and the Sabres are two teams that are younger. If, if obviously Bo Byram and, 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 and different guys – Buffalo step up. They could make a wrong at the wild card, I think, because the East is a little bit weaker as you get to the bottom bottom uh, um, uh, of it. So they could make a little bit close of an interesting run if the Sabres get together. I think the Senators, the Canadians are the worst two teams in the division. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I have Panthers, Leafs, Bruins, Lightning. They're the top four. Yeah, I, I think the, the Leafs are the next best team for me in this division, but with what I saw – what I've seen out of them and what I know, I'm not going to predict them going very high. Yeah. yeah, they're a great regular season team. I see them more as a wild card because they took the C off of Tavares, but they still have that contract. They're still handing out money like it's candy. I don't really like Craig Berube. I never really liked him, even when I was cheering for – yes, I did cheer for the Blues in the 2019 Stanley Cup Championship. A, because I fucking can't stand Boston, and I hate the Bruins more than almost anything in this life. And B – because of that that little girl that had the the terminal illness she was able to fight against and, and she I think she's still doing okay but that was that magical run I still hated Baruby I still couldn't stand the guy I was so mad and every time he's on my screen which is what he wants like that was his role he was an enforcer in the NHL he was there to make the other fan base eternally pissed off and he still does that maybe that's the sandpaper that they need maybe this Leafs team needs to be a wild card team maybe they have to be doubted 
They can't go into the playoff run with any kind of expectations because if they do, they're just going to crumble. That media is going to eat them alive. It's like a, a shark okay. eating its own tail. I think they'll crumble either way. I don't, I don't think they're yeah, it, it it takes takes very likely, card. very, very likely that they're going to crumble either way. But I, I see them possibly as a wild card. They probably will have a little bit more sandpaper, but maybe that takes away from some of the skill and the scoring prowess that we've been able to see. The Metro is interesting. Um, the Penguins are setting all kinds of historical records. Of Evgeny Malkin just passed a, a major goal milestone. Sidney Crosby just passed a major point milestone. They are still sitting on the outside of the wild card right now, and for whatever reason, they just won't put it together. Like, <clears throat> Think back to those Stanley Cup championship runs, the beginning of the season where the Pittsburgh Penguins established themselves, and this that, that's just not the team that they have anymore. Um, I, I don't see them doing much. I see that Washington – it's weird, but if they can get Pierre-Luc Dubois to play some energized hockey, that's a much better team. And they are not just sitting around trying to get Alexander Ovechkin the goal record like everybody was predicting. They're actually trying to make a run at this thing. They got rid of Kemper. They said, you know what? It's not working out for the money that we're trying to pay you, so we're going to go this direction, maybe get a little bit better, maybe be a little bit worse, but we'll be able to build stuff around. They're, they're getting much younger at Capitals, and I think that's going to help them a lot. Um, Tom Wilson's being talked about on possibly being on that first, uh, the when the nations get together next next offseason. Tom Wilson's getting looked at as possibly a first line, second line player for Team Canada. Nah, this late into, that, into his nah, career. Nah, that, that, nah, that's nah, legitimate nah, conversation. Nah, nah, Those nah, are nah, Canadian nah, people nah, talking nah, like that. <laughs> I think I'm Canadian people early. are just looking for some, some for for things to talk about in October. Is what I think. I don't know about that. Okay, uh, um, but so I, I have Rangers the best team in this division still. Um, I think he's. I think obviously Vasilevsky and, and and Panarin and company is is still a very very solid team. I expect big things out of Rangers this year. I, I I then go Hurricanes next. The Hurricanes are just like the Leafs, a great regular season team, absolutely fantastic regular season team. And obviously, having a, a, a bad playoff run last year was an early exit. I really worry about them. I have Devils next as a third team. I think the Devils, with a lot of young talent, uh, with obviously Jack Hughes and company. He can stay healthy. He's they can stay healthy. on a hell of a play, pace right now. Devil, Devils could be a team that that, that, that makes, makes some noise, in my opinion. So I, I have Rangers, Hurricanes, Devils. I put Penguins four because I still believe in Crosby for whatever reason. And then I have Islanders five. I have Capitals six. I think they drop down a little bit after the hot start. Then they slow down. I think Blue Jackets, Blue Jackets and Flyers are the two worst teams. So I think one through six because there's 18, yeah, eight teams in this division, I think can be interchangeable. I, I honestly think could. I, I just went out of a hunch and said that the Capitals – are, are, are going are gonna to slow down. The Islanders are going to slow down. The Penguins pick it up, and the Rangers, Hurricanes, and Devils are the teams that stay hot. Yeah, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the Columbus Blue Jackets before we move on to the Western Conference. Just uh, obviously the, the major tragedy, and, and it changes everything because Johnny Goudreau was the big-time free agent that you brought there and was trying to build as a corner piece, and obviously the unfortunate situation with him and his brother passing away getting hit by the drunk driver when they were home um, in New Jersey for their sister's wedding. I I give the Columbus Blue Jackets a lot of credit because in the short time that they've had to plan it's, it's, around. It's the second time this happened. With the, it's, it's the second the time that they've had a player that, that has passed away very recently up into the season. Um, the players getting off the bus with the Gatorade and, and the Skittles because that was Johnny's thing and, and Matthew Kachuk. You know, say what you want about the guy when he plays against your team and, and he's an absolute asshole on the ice. That was one of Gaudreau's best friends when they were playing in Calgary. And you know, he's he's loving all of the different, you know, taking the the one man down and, and not having a right winger because you know that was supposed to be Johnny's spot. Uh, that was similar to what we saw when Kobe passed away. It's it's one of those moments where you can look at sports and I, nobody really hates the Columbus Blue Jackets because they haven't been really relevant, but everybody's at least cheering for the Blue Jackets. And in the back of your mind, you got to be thinking, like, could this be a season of destiny for what they've had to go through? Is it going to be now? Is it going to be at some point where they just put their foot down? There's always that little tickle in the back of your brain as a sports fan. Like, the movie script is is right there. Terrible tragedy. Awful. One of the worst things. Like, it's it's one of the hardest things that we've talked about on this show, yet it's still still right out there. If Columbus, they're sitting at three and three right now after their first six. So not a whole lot. They they are predicted to be one of the worst teams. But if you're middle of the pack competing for a playoff spot, you can still count that as a season of destiny. Like you did better than 
you did better and dealt with the adversity of losing your captain two weeks before the season starts. Like uh, I give them a lot of kudos. That's a terrible, tough situation to be in at the beginning of a season. Absolutely. And like I said, it, it, anything they do now this season is for him. So they, if they have a great season, it's even better for them. They, they have some young pieces still on that team. Um, they brought in his, one of his good friends from, 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 uh, I think it's Monahan from from Calgary, so he he could be a great centerpiece for that team going forward. And, and like I said, they put things together, they could make a, make a run. I don't think they're going to be the worst team in this division by far and away. I think the Flyers still suck. I think that that, that that's, that's one of the worst teams in hockey right now. I think they're going to struggle night in night out to get points. So uh, yeah, I, I I I don't disagree. I think like I said, I, I think there's a lot of there could be a lot of movement. In this division, a lot of movement. We could see the Devils win division. We could see the Capitals win division. We could see there's a handful of teams that you'd be like, "Hey, this team went on a super hot run, and they they, they made a run in this division to get to get a to get a uh, top seed in in the East." Yeah, because what do the New York Rangers do? They rely on their goaltender. New York Shesterkin is one of the greatest goaltenders in the world. But if that guy goes on a cold streak, or if he, God forbid, gets injured, I'm knocking on wood for all of you Rangers fans right now, so I don't get doxxed or anything as you're watching this. Uh, Because I know that you guys are crazy and you're able to figure out addresses, whether they're private or public or anything like that. But if the Rangers don't have the goaltending to stand up to these teams, we see their offense go in and out. Their offense is streaky as hell, even with Panarin, Lafreniere, and uh, the bread man um, with with, uh, Panarin's the bread man and Zibanejad. Their offense can still go very quiet and they rely heavily on their power play. They don't get the penalties. They don't have the goaltending one night. The Rangers team can go on a streak where they end up losing like five, six games in a row, and that could detrimental, be very detrimental to the end of their season, what they're hoping for. Um, move, let's move over to the Western Conference really quickly. I said this was going to be a shorter episode, but again, here we are blowing hot air into the microphone. We still have NFL pick them to get to. Um, it is getting closer record-wise, and we will get to that here right after. But the Winnipeg Jets right now sitting atop the Central. Winnipeg looks – just like they did last season. I will give them that. Terrible end to the playoff run. Hellebuck was awful. Hellebuck's been the saving grace for my fantasy hockey team. I will give you that. I, te- I text you. Why can't there be one guy on my fantasy roster that saves my team for fantasy football like it is for hockey? Like I get no points out of any of my skaters or, de- or defense, but Hellebuck gets a 36-shot 36 36 shutout, and I'm like, oh, cool. I got 10 points. That's sweet. Connor Hellebuck and this Winnipeg Jets team for the regular season are dangerous. The Stars are still the best team by far and away in this division. With the addition of Stankoven at the end of last season, they got better. They Deshane is playing like a man possessed. Dallas, I still see winning the Central Division. Um, the Avalanche are back off the schneid. They've gotten wins on this season. We're still hoping that things look on the up and up moving forward in, in net and with all the players that we're hoping to come back. Colorado's in a weird situation. Um, I, I feel this similar to how I feel for the, the Denver Nuggets. I don't necessarily care whether they're on the road or whether they're at home because we have Nathan McKinnon, because we have Miko Rantanen. We have these guys, Kale McCarr, that can play with anybody in the world. I'm fine if we're playing on home ice or away, but I need, if Val is back and plays, I need Val for the entire playoff run. I need Landy, if he's going to come back, to come back and at some point get to a level where he's producing this. That's what this team is relying on at this point. And through the first week of the season, let's, let's, let's not sugarcoat this. Kale McCarr is leading, not just defensemen, the entire league in points, the entire league in points. He is leading the entire league in goals and assists thus far. And that just shows one. That was after abs- three really bad games. To start exactly. The season. Exactly. The abs are three and four. And the guy is putting up that much numbers as a defenseman just shows you what this team's possibility is. I don't think we need to win the division either. I have stars, jets, abs. I go Utah at four. I think rejuvenated hockey club as no pun intended. That's why the jazz are going to suck because the owner is worried about the hockey club. <laughs> exactly. So having a new fan base, new, new blood. I, I think that coyotes, once coyotes, great franchise comes in. I think they're a young talent. Dan Gunter and company uh, uh, could take a next step. So I have Cooley, them been carrying my fantasy Cooley, roster Cooley, quite Cooley's a bit. Very, very solid. So I like them. The wild, I think are the next team. The wild are, are a team that will be on the fringe of the wild card. They're, they still have, for whatever reason, in the year of 2024, have Mark Andre Fleury as their number one goalie. I don't think that's going to help them any any much longer. What? Well, you don't have confidence in the flower no more. 
predators have driven themselves into a further hole than we have. And they, they were supposed to have this great season, bring in stamp close, bring in all these great pieces. So I have, I have wild, I have predators. Then I have blues, Blackhawks, the worst two teams. Blues are going to take a step back. It's going to be, it's going to be a very, very relying on blues and Blackhawks. It's going to be a, Hey, Let's see what Bedard can do. Hey, let's see what Cairo and company can do for the Blues and try to get younger and build something toward the future because you're not doing anything on the division at all. So I have Stars, Jets, Avs, Utah, Wild, uh, Predators, Blues, Blackhawks. I see Stars, Jets, Avs being the, the three out of the division. I can see the Avalanche being the three. And I think Avs the Avs the- could could possibly be a wild card team yeah. if, if, if we struggle like we have. Until if the guys, Landy until doesn't the come, back, come back, if Landy, if Landy comes Landy, back later in the season, that could be uh, another thing. And we're still out without Lekkinen, and who knows Lekkinen, how long Lekkinen is going to take back. Is back practicing with his team, Val, uh, 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 Mc- or sorry, Val, Lekkinen, and and uh, 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 Landy all coming back later in the season. If we are in too far of a hole, that could come back to bite us at the end of the season to be in that wild card where we're fighting for our lives to not. To, to, to have to be on the road and just play whoever the number one seed is. So that's why I worry a little bit, but we'll see. And I, you got to be smart to... too. If, if those players don't come back or if the season is, if, if you can tell that the season is that far out of reach, uh, it's, I don't think it's, it'll like, get it's not like you want to pack it. it I, I don't think that it will either, but if in some alternate universe, if it does, I don't necessarily want to mortgage whatever future we may have for a possibility of a wild card run at, for this season. If the season is done, don't necessarily pack it up, but let's start figuring out what the fuck we're going to do to plug these holes because we need to plug the goaltender hole if that's the way that the season goes next season. We need to plug the 2C hole if that's the way that this goes uh, next that's, season. That's, that's I, I know I know you're going to – You're, you're going to say that position. Colton – Colton is No, it's not really Colton. It's Casey Middlestadt, the best the, – for, frankly, the most consistent player through the first seven games in the ass. The 2C is locked up. It's what the hell is going on at the wing position because Colton has had to play first line left wing because of the injuries and everything. It is not the center position. We are fine at middle shot at number two. Trust me. He has been fantastic for this team. It is what the hell we're doing at the wing position because there's no consistency, especially when Miko Rantanen's uh, contract comes in, comes up next year. So the wing position is the biggest headache right now. Defensively, depth is not there either. The 2C position is probably the fifth or sixth thing that we have to worry about because middle stat is here for the next three years after we re-signed him so it is what is going on at the wing position what the hell is looking at the depth and who the hell is going to be the number one net miner because uh, newton has obviously had a very very good last couple of games but georgia has sucked so so there, that, that's 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 the hierarchy 2c is nowhere near any of that it's gonna be it's gonna come up again sooner than you would like to think i i feel like casey middlestead is not going to be a colorado avalanche after this three-year extension but that is the window that we're currently looking at. And whatever you, 20, 28, but and it's a long way away. You got to figure out something with Ranton in. I don't nec- I don't think that it's that far off. I don't think that they're getting further away, but it does always give you a little bit of pause when they say, Oh, we're really close, and then all of a sudden nothing ever happens, and now they just shut down negotiations. I get why players don't like to negotiate during the season, but it, it leaves the fans in a little bit of a limbo because yeah, it could be like that's a huge piece. If Ranton in for whatever reason, doesn't get re-signed and decides to, you know, it's a Stamco situation or a Ryan McDonough situation where, yeah, this guy is a very great, important piece and we definitely need to keep him around, but his number's just that far out of left field I, in the hard cap sport. The, the difference between Miko Ranson and Steven Stamkos and some of these other guys is Miko's in his late 20s, early 30s. Most I, positive. Stamkos is late 30s. So I'm just not, trying. I, I mean, when like, McDonough was not. moved from New York to Tampa, uh, he was he was about like 28 29 and was there and and started to build a culture and I just and think great. with the amount I of think that he's going to be here. I'm not predicting that he's not. I'm just like with the amount of inconsistency I've had from Nachushkin and, and and frankly Logan O'Connor staying healthy or or, or any of the Atlanta squad being healthy. There's only been one consistent motherfucker at the wing for this team and it's not the Drew one either who's out for in a couple of weeks. Lekin has been injured. It's been 90 it's been 96. Yeah, he's 96. It's been 96 and Mika Ranson and then and like I said, he is not a guy that I'm moving. I'll tell you that right now. It is a, frankly, it, it is a Landis Cog or it's, it's somebody else because, like I said, we're, we're, this is fucking the second, first week of the season, so we're not pumping the brakes. We still think we're a playoff team over here. But we would love to see this team get healthy and get on the right track, that's for sure. Rantanen is obviously not going to be a priority until we get closer to offseason, whatever that is, whether it's uh, 
after a playoff run, whether it's after first, second round exit, anything is on the table. I think the Avalanche can finish anywhere from possibly in the conference final and, and Stanley Cup final to, well, we barely made it in as a wild card team and we gave the first round a, a hell of a shot. We gave it the good old college try, seven game series, and we ended up not, not doing anything. I think it's all on the table. Let's move over to the Pacific. Um, obviously, Vegas, we saw them opening night. We scored four goals and they still beat us by four. If that tells you anything about how good Vegas is and they're not necessarily going to go anywhere. Um, the other teams right now looking good in this division, Calgary, Vancouver, holding down the other playoff spots. The Kraken kind of fell back down to earth after their miraculous first and second season runs. San Jose still not doing anything in Anaheim. Uh, they're getting rid of pieces and, and not necessarily bringing in anything anymore. What do you see out of this Pacific? I mean, it's the, the biggest talking point is going to be the Edmonton Oilers and, and, and what they look like after losing a heartbreaking game seven um, on the road. So that's that's where the, where the, where the conversation starts. Uh, Vegas is obviously two years removed from winning the Cup as well. Very, very good team. Um, Canucks obviously had a very, very good regular season last year too. So they could, they, they could make some noise. Flames have been hot thus far. Um, there's some bad teams in, the, in this division. The Ducks aren't great. The Kraken aren't very good. And obviously, the Sharks are a team that's relying on a rookie right now to to to, to dig them out, similar to the Blackhawks. So, I think I think the the, the Oilers, Knights, Canucks, uh, and I'll throw Kings in there too are, are my four teams out of this division. Um, the Oilers and Knights will probably be two of the best teams in the West alongside the Stars. Uh, so that, that that's that 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 that's what I think out of this division. Uh, I still do have faith in the Kings. It's just the third. I think the Pacific and the the Central even are it's normally the top two teams that you wind up seeing in the conference finals. It's very rarely is it a wild card team. There's been the miraculous wild card runs, but it's hard to win a, as a wild card team in a seven game series. It just doesn't happen all that often. Um, Stanley Cup predictions in October once again. Who is winning or who is playing for and winning the Stanley Cup in your eyes? I'm going to go Rangers over Panthers in six for the Eastern Conference Finals. I think Vasilevsky gets hot at the end of the season. I think the Rangers uh, make a little bit of a run. I think they just have a little bit of a Stanley Cup hangover, and and, and they lose, uh, come up short. The West, I have Oilers over the Stars in five. I think the Oilers are – McDavid and Drysdale are determined uh, and, and will come out of the West. Then I have – the Stanley Cup coming back to Canada. I'll take the Oilers over Rangers in seven. Uh, this this would be now the, the second straight uh, uh, time a, a uh, team lost in the finals and came back and won it the next year. Obviously, the Panthers lost the Knights two years ago, won last year. Oilers lost to the Panthers. I think they do it do it, do it this year. And I think McDavid and Dry had a company, and, and, and obviously they're going to figure out their goalie situation at some point. Their defense is still very, very solid the time and, and, and playing the wing position for them as well. I'll take the Oilers over the Rangers in seven. There was something about the Canucks last season. It kind of came out of nowhere. And maybe it's going to be the total opposite because I'm paying attention to it now. But the it was the culture change, and it was bringing in the young guys that ended up playing way above their heads. you got to get a similar level of performance out of them. But in my mind, if I'm just going with the first thing that's coming to my head, I think that it's the Stars and the Canucks in the Western Conference Final. I don't think that the Edmonton Oilers will get back there because look at what the Edmonton Oilers have done to start the season off so far. I get that it's a week in. Uh, yeah, last year. I know that they did that last year, <laughs> but how many times are you going to be able to go down 20 games and put yourself in a 20-point hole to be able to climb all the way back? And it. It's just I'm, I'm going by laws of percentages, and I'm going by the team that looked like they were improving at the end of last season. And if it wasn't for going up against McJesus, we would have seen the Canucks in the Western Conference Final last year against the Dallas Stars. So – it, it pains me. It pains me so badly to do this. But if it's the Stars and the Canucks, I think that the Stars have the advantage of making it out. The Stars have been able to make it to the Stanley Cup Finals in the recent years. They have not been able to win it, but they've been able to make it there. Um, I can't – I don't think I can necessarily pick a back-to-back. -back. I don't think that Florida – that would be three Stanley Cup Finals runs in a row. And, a lot. A lot. and losing one and winning the second one, it, it just feels like it's too much to overcome. I it's see been, the rain. Another fun stat, it's been five years since a non-Florida team has has been in the Stanley Cup final, by the way. This is true. Tampa Bay and Florida have, have represented uh, 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 have represented the East five straight years since before COVID. So it's it's, it's wild to think that, but that's, that's a fact. You got that one there. I am uh, – I'm going to predict the Rangers and Stars, and I'm going to give the Rangers a Stanley Cup. They get another one. So in, instead of 1994, 1940 – now they can start chanting 2025, I, I guess. 
it's going to be annoying, but I am kind of the New York guy uh, on the show, um, especially when it comes to the next sport that we're going to be talking about. Wrapping things up here, we are not going to do our segments. I need to get it into bed at, at some point and get a little bit of rest, but we are updated with the standings. Nico is 25 and 12. I am 21 and 16. That means we both had pretty damn good weeks last week. We obviously didn't really talk about much of the games from week seven, but we are on to week eight of the NFL season presented by find the good brand. Go to find the good brand.com. Use promo code bench B E N C H and you get 10% off at checkout. Starting things are off tonight. As you are watching this on YouTube or listening to it, the Thursday night football game features the Vikings coming off their first loss of the season to the Detroit lions and the Los Angeles Rams who are coming in as a plus 130 underdog over under for this game. They are expecting a lot of points between Sean McVay and his former protege, Kevin O'Connell. Uh, I like this is a good spot, I think, for the Vikings, or it could be a very bad spot. It kind of depends on which team shows up. I think Brian Flores last week uh, was shocked that, you know, it didn't work. Jared Goff was able to read his blitzes. He knew that guys were going to be dropping out, and he was able to kill the plays that he needed to kill. And the Detroit Lions looked like it just a juggernaut of a football team. I don't think that it takes away from what the Vikings were able to do. And the Rams have a worse defense than the Lions. So I have faith that Kevin O'Connell, the Vikings, even on the road in Los Angeles, will get a win in prime time Thursday night. We're going to finally get to see Sam Darnold in, in one of his few standalone performances that he's going to get this season. The biggest rumor mill out of this game is that, that the Vikings are interested in Matthew Stafford, which I thought is very, very interesting because the Darnold obviously is – been very, very solid this year. They've only lost one fucking game to the Lions, who obviously are the NFC favorites right now, and I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Um, but the Rams are as injured as injured can be. I the, that like, like obviously Cooper Cup is a possibility he's back this week. I think that could help them. He's been on the trade 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 rumor mill as well. Karen Williams has been very, very solid for them. He's banged up as well. The Vikings will win this game. I I I I I I, I do, I, I would worry if I'm a Vikings fan and think that we're going to get Matthew Stafford because I don't want Matthew Stafford. Sam Darnold is doing just fine. Let me not for, let me not let me not let me you not forget that JJ McCarthy is still there. He's still there. The last thing you need to do is waste a a, a first round pick on Stafford and 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 have not have a first another first round pick next year when you could use that to get a better offensive alignment for 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 McCarthy slash Darnold or get a better defensive weapon in next year's draft. That's the last thing you you could do. So I, look, I hope the Vikings stick with it. They're they're a very very solid team. They're making a lot of noise in the NFC North. That seems very very tight. So I'll go Vikings as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that division plays out because as of now, I believe all the teams in the NFC North are. Above 500, the Packers look pretty good. Even uh, they be, ended up beating Houston last weekend. So that that division is something that is probably better than anybody ever pr predicted. Moving on to the next game, the Eagles, who are coming off beating the Giants and the Browns, are playing the Bengals, who are coming off beating the Giants and the Browns. This is a weird mirror game. Um, I think both fan bases are kind of in the same spot, yet we're at opposite records. Where the Eagles were five and two, and the Bengals are two and two and five. Three? Did we win three? I think last week might have been three. Whatever it is, we're opposite situations record-wise. But Nick Sirianni isn't the most popular coach in Philadelphia. Zach Taylor, I still think, you know, with the way yes, your defense has looked great against two bad offensive teams, but you're now your offense looks like it's stumbling and it's not able to score the way that we were seeing at the beginning of the season. Maybe it's just things evening out where your defenses are starting to to even that level of play. Uh, I've been fading the Bengals when they play I, what I think are good teams. And I think Saquon is going to have a field day against this Bengals defense. Do I think that the Bengals defense are going to have three outstanding rush defense performances in a row? I don't think so. I'm I'm going to go with the Eagles and Saquon getting the win in Bengal, in uh, Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. And hopefully we can maybe get closer to getting rid of Zach Taylor. I – Look, look, obviously the defense performance last week was so much better because of obviously Deshaun Watson going out with Achilles injury. And you had Dorian Thompson Robson being thrown out there for no fucking reason. And who knows why he's even a quarterback. And he broke league. his and, finger. So then we well, got first, to see James anyways. Look at James anyways. Who, congratulations. But that's the first time we ever saw the emergency third street quarterback come in. <laughs> so so I'm glad it was Jameis. If everyone was glad it was Jameis. Um, 
you you let up 14 points to that fucking horrible offense also. So and it and, but I think at home I'll go I'll take the bait. I'll be the one to take the Bengals here at home. I think that the Eagles the Giants suck. Daniel Jones sucks. I I I, I that I, that takes I take that game to no account last week. No account last week at all. Yeah, I know, but that's who the Bengals played two weeks ago. I know ex- exactly, and I also take no one to account the Browns wins for these two teams either. So it really doesn't. I'll take the two and a half at home, I guess, because it's a home game, and I think that slowly, I think Burrow is going to figure out figure it out. And like I said, Burrow, if the Bengals can get into the playoffs, Burrow is going to be in an MVP conversation because of how well he's playing. So, uh, I, I think that the Bengals went at home. I think if this is in Philly. I think I go the other way, but I'll take the home team. It's weird because thinking about the Bengals wins this season, it's the Panthers, it's the Browns, it's the Giants. Not necessarily uh, really bad teams, beating. but at least one of them games. is in division. One of them yeah. is in division and in conference. So, hey, and you looked good against the other two conference teams that you played. You ended up losing close games, won in overtime to the Baltimore Ravens, who look like the, the next team to beat. Moving forward, we have the Bills off of a huge win. First game that they had Amari Cooper going to Seattle to take on Mike McDonald and the Seattle Seahawks. Also coming off the Schneid, they finally broke their losing streak. Looks like beat if you give snot. Geno Smith, they beat the snot out of Atlanta. By the way, beat the absolute well, snot out of them. Yeah, Atlanta. <laughs> Kirk Cousins talked about the wrong game being a trap game because uh, <laughs> he was talking about the game before, and Seattle came in and gave him a big trap. If you block for Geno Smith, he can do some things for you. Uh, I'm interested to see what DK status is because I think he was either carded or just at least removed from the field, wasn't out there playing. But you still have Jackson Smith and Jigba, Tyler Lockett, and uh, Kenneth Walker along with a Geno Smith that has been in the league long enough. He can read a defense. I, I still I still see why the Bills are favored. I still think that the Bills with Josh Allen and now having receivers to throw to, holy shit, this guy can fucking play. I love Mark, that. Love the it, Cowboy playing. Amari Cooper, I know we didn't really talk about it last week. Amari Cooper, that, that, that may be a massive addition that – that that way outweighs the, the shitty Devontae Adams and power of friendship in New York. Like like that is adding that weapon to that offense that obviously they built their lineup. Obviously having Kincaid, James, finally a running game with James Cook going. You have Keon Coleman and Shakir, two receivers that are going hungry. You have a number one guy now that frankly doesn't have to be a number one guy. He doesn't need the ball constantly. He is just a weapon that's going to be a mismatch for, for, for cornerbacks. Do we put the number one on him? Do we put the number one on Keon Coleman? Or do we shade the tight in it, it it adds a lot of factors into this and i help and it helps the bills so so much and i think this may be the best bills team we've seen in the last three years and frankly in my opinion that's because of how well josh allen's been playing as well so i'll ride the bills here as well on the road josh allen talking about team, guys that can be in the possible mvp conversation if he continues on because uh, he started the season off with no weapons and now if he's able to take advantage of the weapons that they got him in the season he would be right there in that mvp conversation and, and possibly looking at a playoff run that could be the, this could be the year of josh allen that we've all been waiting for um moving on to our team we're favored by 10 did you see how did i, I did you watch the panthers game no i did not watch it no they are not. They're, they're they bad. are as they're bad so as bad. they were with Bryce Young in week one and two. Now that it, teams are game planning Andy Dalton again, they are one of the worst football teams I have ever laid my eyes on in history. <laughs> well, in well, history. Well, if I told you that the Broncos were going to be favored by 10 at the beginning of the season, would you have believed me? Probably not. I, 10 is I, just I, a big number in the NFL. 10 is in a general. massive number. Yeah, 10 is a massive Broncos number. have not made the playoffs in six years, eight years, whatever it is. Uh, look, I, it is Bryce Young back in at quarterback this week because Sam Darnold was in a car crash. So he, or not Sam Darnold, excuse me, uh, Andy Dalton, basically the same quarterback in my opinion. Both my heads, both guys are just fucking out there because why not? Um, so Andy Dalton is injured. So it will be Bryce Young quarterback. I pray for Bryce Young. The, 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 I don't know if – this, this is a great statistic that I think is really, really uh, encapsulated this season for the Denver Broncos. The Broncos have the highest sack differential in the league. Bo Nix is taking the lowest sacks in the league, so lowest amount of sacks in the league for a quarterback that started at least half the games and also has – the Broncos have the most sacks, one, the top five sacks in the league. That is a great statistic for a rookie quarterback in a young defense. That's a great. That's as good as you could want. That's as good as you want. You need two things to win a championship. You need a guy who can throw the ball and a guy who can get after throwing the ball. Plain and simple. And the Broncos 
Seem, yeah, Bo Nix didn't have a great game against New Orleans, but Seem as though they can figure that out. Um, the running game, I mean, the, by the way, just, what did I tell everybody last week? Who was going to be the coach to lay down and roll over for Sean Payton, especially coming back to New Orleans no, for the okay. first time? It was Dennis Allen. <laughs> he rolled time. over and his team fucking rolled over too. Because yeah, Marshawn well, Lattimore but, pulling himself out for a hamstring tightness injury. Marshawn Dude. Lattimore was the only person that's an actual NFL talent on that field for the Saints last night. Because uh, Kamara also pulled himself out at some point in that game, too. And they were running, I think, Latavius Murray probably in his 15th year with 10 different teams out there. Or Spencer Rattler. Rattler. Well, whatever. Because then, then, then Hater. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Poor Spencer Rattler. Yeah, I know. I, 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 put the tweet out there. I put the tweet out there that they trust him more with a laptop than not taking a timeout before they're just going to kneel the ball and run – all, all I'll say is this. I'm, I'm not going to, to air this, this information out because it was told to me by a credible source, and I hate doing this. I hate putting more. I know the reason why he was kicked out of the school in Arizona because I went to went to a basketball game at his high school because my friend also works there currently, Jonah. Shout out Jonah Starr. Works at the school that Spencer Rattler played at. I know the reason why he was kicked out. I'm not going to say it because that's not my business. But this, 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 this Saints team is just a shell of a song. Plain simple. And frankly, so is this Panthers team. The Broncos should have absolutely dominate this game. That this, this is zero doubt in my mind. I I told you as we as I was watching the Saints game, the Saints shouldn't score more than ten points, and they didn't. They didn't. They scored ten points right at the end of the game because of because they threw a Jake Hayner for whatever reason, and Jake Hayner led them on a touchdown damn drive. Good. That dude was a winner in, in college, too. If you ever watched Fresno State, Jake Hayner was a fucking baller. So, so maybe he's the backup guy if Derek Hart doesn't go, but the Saints still suck. So, uh, I look, at the Broncos, even if Bo Nix doesn't have a great game, Javante Williams can, can have another fucking career day, which is wild because I was talking about replacing him the last couple of weeks, and here he is having a game of his life and just running the snot out of the ball where, where the Saints have no answer. Panthers don't have any answer for the run game either. And that's going to open everything up. Um, I would love – I've heard trade rumors out there. Broncos are in a couple of them. I've heard Njoku, obviously Njoku, yep, a, a guy that Njoku. Cleveland Cleveland may be out on. And if they're selling, that the Broncos could get at a cheap price. I've he heard a couple a hell of a catch this he, weekend he, against the Bengals in the corner of the end zone. He could be a very, very – promising piece because there isn't a fucking single tight end on this entire roster that's worth a shit. Let's be honest, it's a Dulce's Kroll and company ain't doing anything. So Joku would be a massive boost to a rookie quarterback. I've heard a couple of receivers be, be dangled out there as well. Um, I love the development of young receivers. I think Bailey had a great game. For Troy Franklin's finally getting it, getting some reps. Mims is having some more effect offensively. I love seeing that. I think that we can get a veteran in the offseason to add into this young group possibly if, you want, if that's the way you want to go um, outside of Sutton because Sutton's time is probably over. But this offense of the Broncos should score more than 20 points on this bad St. Panthers team. And this Panthers defense should also not score more than 10 points on this team. So the Broncos should cover the minus 10. All right. Uh, let's rapid fire Sunday night, Monday night football. I am going to play the card that I have to wake up early. So Sunday night football, it's a bad game anyways because these two teams are just coming off of the worst situations. Um I'm going to go 49ers because I hate the Cowboys, and I think Jerry Jones is having a panic attack and a midlife crisis and dementia all at the same time right in front of us. What, who do you got for Sunday night? I'll, I'll take the 49ers as well. The Cowboys stink right now. The 49ers, as banged up as they are, they're still their team. And that leaves us with Monday night football. The Giants are in prime time yet again, and this time they're taking on the Steelers. And, hey, look at that. Russell Wilson, quarterback the team he to, he quarterback the team he to more than 30 more. points. He played well. And he must – you know that he loves – he's not going to throw anything. They don't have anything in the middle of the field. They don't run any routes. They don't do any of that. They have Pickens on the outside. And Pickens, if you don't want him to lose focus and go try and shiv somebody on the other side of the field, you got to just keep throwing him the ball. And Russ is going to keep throwing him the ball. That's – that's the formula at this point. And it's a good it's, formula. Uh, it is look, a good formula. I think look, that they're going to win this game. Russ seems like a nice guy. It did not work here. Obviously, did not work here. Steelers are a better franchise currently. They consistently win 500 football. They also play the sorry ass fucking Jets, which which I should have known better that the power of friendship wasn't going to work over there. Dom, I hope you're fucking listening because that team is still ass. Uh, um, the, the the Giants are probably just as good as the Jets, if not better, frankly, because I think they could be at times. So yeah, give me the Steelers here. I hate that we're even on a lot of these games, but that's just the way it goes when there's. 
honestly, it's not a great slate this week. No, it's, it's and the only one time. that we're it's off on is the Bengals game, where I picked the Eagles, and and you are backing. You're backing the stripes. Oh. Who day? Who day? No. Who they say go beat them Bengals? I know you're not going to do that. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> um, that'll do it for week eight of our pick em, presented by Find a Good Brand. Go to findagoodbrand.com and you use promo code BENCH, B-E-N-C-H, you get 10% off at checkout. You can tell that my words are starting to go. I've battled my throat, almost trying to give out on me a couple times in the recording of this episode. I have nothing left to, to give I got, to the two, people. I got what two, do you got? Last, two last things. One, it's Max Holloway Fight Week, baby. Max Holloway Fight Week. UFC, I think it's Three oh seven six, whatever that. So Max Holloway fight week. Everyone loves. Everyone knows I love Max Holloway. If you if you like watching violence, watch Max Holloway versus Ilya Taporia this weekend. It's going to be a very very fun fight. Sorry to that. Last uh, other last thing. Congrats on the New York Liberty winning their first WNBA championship. Massive officiating problems though with 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 a, with a foul, a tic tac foul, which which Brianna Stewart. If you go back and watch the replay, Brianna Stewart walked into the foul and then. It was marginal contact at best at the body, not even on the shooting arm. And guy or two free throws that extend the game into overtime where the Liberty obviously won it. That was a big conversation on basketball Twitter because the Lynx, the Lynx coach did not hold back at all about how congratulations on winning your first first WNBA championship. We were chasing after our fifth and that the refs deserved to, deserved to not call a playoff game ever again in their history. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a little precursor to what the NBA season is going to be. So, uh, uh, yeah, congrats to Liberty again, ANSQ and company. It's a, it's a, it's a great accomplishment, obviously. It's it's fun when, when that stuff happens. Um, but it was it's sad that – even in the WNBA, where the league has obviously gotten a lot better, hopefully over the days, highest viewership it ever has, that we still have this fucking problem with refs are making it about them. So it's all, all around. Look at the Texas Georgia game. We didn't talk college football this week, but look at the Texas oh, Georgia oh game. God. You texted me. You never. I've never seen. I've never seen that. that. I don't think no. that's, you can do. You no. can't do that. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, it's not in the rules. You can't. You legitimately can't do that, and you especially can't do that when the reason why you had the chance to confer is. Not the right re- – like, Texas, the fan base, you guys should know better. You can't be chucking shit on the field. You oh, there's precedent now being set, unfortunately. No, I know. And that's, that's, that's the worst why part about all this. The, I, I heard – I was listening to Joel Klatt or, or one of my other shows, and I heard that the Georgia president, athletic director, and, like, head football liaison were all down on the field and given just an earful of shit to the SEC commissioner. Like, what the oh, fuck I'm are sure. you doing? Good. Like, you I let a so. team that we just brought into the conference overturn a penalty? That's not allowed. That can't happen. What are you we cannot, doing? Five minutes later, you cannot just fucking decide. You do not announce it. That guy runs. If you make that decision of, hey, hey, actually, that, that shouldn't be called, you make that – you run in like a fucking bat out of hell and make sure that that doesn't – you announce – Did you the, see the, the explanation that the SEC announce. gave? No, I did Did you see – so the explanation was that the referee got confused as to which team was on offense and defense. Oh, he forgot God. that Texas was on offense and Georgia oh, was on defense God. and the receiver happened to be in a trail position and he just like spaced and flipped. Oh, Georgia's got the ball. They're on offense. Pass interference. So you see the ball running the opposite direction of the ball's being thrown. You think that the offense is running that way? Oh, that's, that's Get these reps that's of Adderall or something. Good. They need that's to keep their good. focus. That's too good. That is too good. They got to keep their focus uh, just like the MLB players used to. All right. With that, thank you, Gary. Everybody, for tuning in to episode 203 of the Far Into the Bench podcast. If you enjoyed what you listened to, we'll be back next week. You can go back and check out our older episodes. Follow us at FEOTB Pod. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, nice or mean. Subscribe and leave a like, and then you can leave a comment. And we will be back with everybody next week. But for myself, uh, Jimmy Pilato, my co host, Nico Bryant, stay safe, enjoy. We will see you guys next time. Peace. If you don't stay down and you never quit, come on over here and sit on the far end of the bench. Mm-hmm.